In this video, we look at IP addresses, both IP version 4 and IP version 6. Every device on the network has a network interface card, although this may be built into the motherboard. Every network interface card has a media access control address or a MAC address and it's used to route the frames on a local area network. Traditional MAC addresses are 12 digits, that's 48-bit hex numbers. They're written in six pairs, separated by colons as shown here. If the local area network is connected to a wide area network, such as the internet, then a different addressing technique is needed and IP addressing is used to route frames. On a wide area network, these frames are actually referred to as packets. You will sometimes see them referred as the same thing and used interchangeably, although this is not technically correct. Broadly speaking, you can think of IP addresses as being either static or dynamic. The IP address for your whole network is assigned by your internet service provider. And if this is a home situation, this would give your home router a public facing IP address. Here it's the one starting 8243. All computers within your network have an IP address assigned by their own internal router. And indeed the router itself assigns itself a private inward facing IP address. Here it starts 192168. The IP addresses the devices inside your network will change as devices log on and log off and join your local area network. Whereas the public facing IP address tends to remain static. Now this is a massive oversimplification and, um, and abstraction. The number of IP4 addresses is actually far too limited for the vast number of devices being connected to the internet. If your computer use, loses its IP address assigned by the internet service provider, it will assign it another one from available pool that it has. It is possible to have truly static IP addresses, but these are relatively rare, and IP addresses are typically assigned, reclaimed, and reassigned as needed. We'll look later at IP version 6, which helps to overcome this limitation. So let's turn our attention back to IP addresses and look at them in a little more detail. As mentioned already, an IP address is essentially a unique number which is used to address or identify a host computer or node which communicates over IP on the internet. There are actually two versions of IP in use today, IP version 4 and IP version 6. Here's an example of a typical IP4 address. It is written as four numbers separated by periods and each number can be in the range 0 to 255. In total, an IP4 address is 32 bits in size or four bytes. These deanery numbers obviously resolve into binary behind the scenes and provide us with a range of around four billion addresses. The actual number available for use is slightly lower than this as some of the addresses are reserved for special uses, but this is beyond the GCSE specification. There are two parts to every IP address. The first part is used to identify the network the traffic needs to go to, and the second part identifies the specific host device within that network the traffic needs to go to. In this example, we can see the first three bytes, 107, dot five six dot nine four is being set aside to represent the network and the final byte one 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 is being used to represent the host within the network. The split between network and host identifier doesn't always have to be made in the same way as shown here. This is just an example. But again it's more than enough at GCSE to just appreciate that an IP address is made up of a network and a host component. Now, the 4 billion possible addresses available for use by IP version 4 sounds like a lot. But a quick look at this graph shows a problem. Back in 1992, there were around 1 million devices, give or take, connected to the internet, 
each with their own IP address. By 2012, we had the advent of smartphones, wireless tablets and laptops, and many other connected devices, and the number shot up to almost 9 billion. Now, the reason why we didn't switch over completely to IP version 6 way back in 2012, as this number is clearly already bigger than 4 billion, is we've been using all sorts of tricks and workarounds to reuse and make use of the fact that we have more devices connected to the internet at any given time than we actually had available IP4 addresses. Now that's 2012, fast forward to 2018, and we have almost 35 billion connected devices requiring IP addresses. You may have also come across the term, the Internet of Things. And with that, we're going to see an explosion of IP devices over the next decade, which will want an internet connection. Already, we have light bulbs, which can be assigned IP addresses and can be controlled remotely via apps on phones. And that is why IP version 6 was invented. Essentially, it works the same as IP version 4, but this time it's using 128 bits. You can see now that we encode these as eight groups of four hexadecimal digits separated by colons. But again, behind the scenes, the number is still being stored as a 128 bit or 16 byte binary number. This gives us an approximate 340 trillion 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 combinations of IP version 6 addresses, which hopefully should be more than enough for the foreseeable future. That's everything you need to know about IP addresses for the exam. Pause the video and take some notes.